In this section, let's look at applying SSH tunneling to MySQL clients to encrypt and further secure the communications between the two. So we'll label this area SSH tunneling. And the features include encryption, security for MySQL star or client server communications. As you may know, by default, when you connect with a MySQL-related client, such as MySQL Admin, MySQL itself, or MySQL Show, or some other command, the communications occur in clear text. So MySQL clients support SSL, but another nifty way, or another convenient way, is to set up a tunnel first, forward a port, and then connect over that forwarded connection. That bypasses SSL. So two obviates the need for SSL configuration, which is not a big deal and probably is preferred since it's built in. However, SSH makes it easy since if you're running Linux or any brand of Unix, invariably you'll have SSH facilities there. So with that said, let's see what's going on with our configuration. So some tasks include to route the connection over SSL. So there are a number of ways we can approach this. First, we could force the server to listen to the loopback adapter, which would ensure that it's no longer available across the routed network. Or we could initially set up a tunnel and then force the server to listen to the loopback adapter. So our first task will be to set up an SSH tunnel from the client. And the client in this case will be Linux CBT Serve 1 to the server, which in this case is Linux CBT SUSE 1. Currently Linux CBT Serve 1 has the MySQL client tools installed. It's not running a server. So any MySQL operations performed from that box will take place elsewhere using remote connectivity options. So how do we go about setting up this tunnel? First you need a session on the remote system. And once you have a session, you use the SSH command and perform a local port forward, which will take a port that's indicated and make it available to the local client while routing the traffic across the wire across the tunnel. The syntax is port, so we're going to make available 3306, which is the standard MySQL port. This way, we won't have to specify the port option for any of the clients. The target server which has an IP address of 7550 and its port, which is also 3306, as well as the server to use to get to the target, which is 7550. So this is the local port forwarding syntax. Again, to cover, we'll be binding to port 3306 locally. We'll be sending all traffic that's sent locally to 3306 to a target system of 192.168.75.50, port 3306. The ports don't have to be the same, but in this case, they are. And we'll be using the host 192.168.75.50 to get to the host 192.168.75.50. It may seem oxymoronic, but it makes sense because in the case where you need to forward ports, whereby the target server has access to a destination server, perhaps on a routed subnet, then in that case, the two IP addresses would be different. So this will set up the tunnel providing we authenticate, and it's made more seamless if we have PKI authentication in place. So here we are on serve one. First, let's SSH to Linux CBT SUSE one using its IP address to see if it prompts us for authentication. If it does, we'll kill the connection and then copy our keys to the target server so that when we set up the tunnel, it's done for us seamlessly and so that as we either script this out in the future or perform the tunnel setup right before we launch our MySQL client utilities, it's rather seamless. So to confirm whether or not we've got keys, we'll LSL in our SSH directory and we should see something terminating in .pub. So there's our key. So we'll SSH copy ID in the hidden SSH directory idrca.pub to 192.168.75.50 without a terminating colon as we do with SCP. 
This will prompt us initially for authentication, then subsequent communications will be PKI enabled, providing we authenticate successfully. So there's the prompt. And now let's try to SSH into the server to be sure that it's seamless. This should momentarily grant us access without prompting us for a password. And then that will set the way for us or pave the way for us to easily set up our tunnel. So great, we've been authenticated successfully. So let's just note that that's an optional task. So note, optionally, consider implementing PKI passwordless authentication. It makes the process more seamless. So let's control shift V to paste our original command that will route port 3306. This will connect to 192.168.75.50. And there we see the connection doesn't look like much has occurred, but nonetheless, so long as this TTY or pseudo terminal remains open, we'll have a port that's forwarded locally. So we've been granted pseudo terminal number nine. So we'll leave this window open. Now in a separate window, let's reconnect to Linux CBT serve one located at 111. And once we gain access to the box, we'll see that port 3306 is now available on the remote side. So we'll wait for it to prompt us. And then indicate the password. And now we've got a second TTY on the remote system, which happens to be pseudo terminal number one. Nets that NTLP. And if we grep, but well, we can see it above. Notice that the port auto binds to a loopback adapter, which is fine. So 3306 is now available. SSH has control of it. So what this means is by default, SSH binds to the loopback adapter, which means the port isn't shared with users on your network. So note, by default, port forwarding does not share the port that is forwarded on a routable interface. Instead, it binds to the loopback adapter, which is what we're seeing, which is fine, because so long as we have loopback access on the remote system, we can connect to that port. So to connect to this port, we'll use any of the MySQL utilities. Let's just start with the MySQL client utility to try to make a connection. We could even use Telnet or Nmap, for example to tell whether or not the port is open. So task two is to test MySQL asterisk client utilities against the forwarded port. So a simple invocation would be as follows, MySQL. So that'll prompt for a password will indicate the host and the host of course is the loopback adapter in this case so 127.0.0.1 will do the trick and this will attempt to connect us as the user root at the foreign fully qualified domain name of the host if it's presented or the short name and worse or at worst the IP address so from this remote system where we're forwarding the port, let's try to launch a connection to 127.0.0.1. It prompts, so we'll supply root's password, and then you'll see that the server indeed has denied us. Now this goes back to what constitutes MySQL credentials, username at hostname. There isn't a user in the grants table defined at this particular fully qualified domain name. One workaround for this, as we've alluded to earlier, is to define a user named root at a wildcard host such as percent, which stands for everything, or is a placeholder for asterisk, or is synonymous with asterisk. So let's just note. So otherwise we would have connected. So attempts to connect, but fails because of undefined user. So to define the user, we'll be using the grant command. To fix this, this is on the server. 
will log into a MySQL terminal monitor or supply it on the command line. But it's easier if we use a terminal monitor because whenever you make privileges or changes to the privileges, you should execute flush privileges. So we'll be granting, and this will be a root user, all privileges on all databases, all tables to the user defined as root at, and instead of localhost, percent. We could explicitly indicate the FQDN if we'd like of the connecting server, but then you'd have to do this for every instance of root connecting, which of course is more secure, but less convenient. So root at, and we always specify the at in between the single, colon, single quotes at percent, identified by in between single quotes, the password, and here we can specify the password, let's say ABC123 for example, which is weak, with the grant option to allow this user the privilege to grant privileges to other users. So this will grant the privilege, but of course we need to follow up with a flush privileges so that it takes effect, otherwise we will invariably encounter an error. So let's connect locally from the host server and we'll prompt for password. While in, for example, you can execute a show grants, you'll see who's granted access to use the system. And here are the grants for the connected user and the privileges for the connected user. We're connected as root at localhost, which is a defined user. So let's define our new user with the grant option and then flush the privileges and now we should have a new user defined so if we select star from mysql.user we'll see the newly defined user root at any host like we've got lcbt products demo at any host as we've tested in the last section so now the privileges have been flushed we may quit and then reattempt to connect across the encrypted tunnel and that'll connect us so let's pull that window open and re-authenticate using the loopback adapter. And it fails because we've indicated an incorrect password. So let's try that again. And now we have access. So we've connected. Now let's show grants. By the way, the history that we typed in from the other system will show up. So we'll show grants. And now you can see that we're connected as root from any host. So now we may connect from any host on the wire that has the MySQL client library installed with the appropriate utilities. So there are our privileges we can connect. And this session is indeed encrypted because it's going across the tunnel. If the tunnel breaks, the connection breaks. For example, this is the window with the open tunnel. If we kill this window, let's just double check that. If we kill this window, our connection's done. So let's just check this here. We'll drop the connection, which will return us to Linux CBT serve one. And then in the window where we've connected, let's just double check. We'll quit. And that session's now dead. Any subsequent queries would have failed because the connection's broken. Let's try to reconnect now that we've dropped the encrypted tunnel and again that's the incorrect password but notice this time the message is different the inability to connect to the loopback address and if we nets that ntlp grep 3306 the default port of course it's not listening until we re-erect the ssh tunnel which leads us to another option another way of instantiating tunnels and that is with the gateway option, which allows all users on the wire to take advantage of the secure tunnel. So as a third option, set up tunnel so that it is available on all routable interfaces. This will ensure that other users can take advantage of the tunnel. So 3A, this time we'll launch the SSH session slightly differently by indicating the gateway option, which is the G option. So we'll be doing an SSH with everything else, but we'll turn on the lowercase G option and then that will share it out for us accordingly. So that's G, 
with everything else. Locally forward 3306. A local forward is from the perspective of the user who would like to connect. So it's done locally versus remotely, which is a reverse sends a remote port back to your local system. Something that's done with a lot of nifty free utilities on the net with SSH under the hood, of course. So 3306 on the host 7550 is to be routed via 192.168.7550. By the way, if MySQL were bound to the loopback adapter on the remote system, then we would change this host identifier to the loopback address, but still access it via SSH, via the routable interface. That will show you momentarily. So this will set up a gateway listener. And the only way this will not work is if gateway ports is disabled. But usually the command line overrides, which will cause it to work. So our recent invocation is that. We'll control C and just paste our new invocation. This will log in using PKI. And momentarily when we run an ETS that on the Linux CBT Serve 1 box, the Red Hat box, we'll see that the port 3306 will be made available. Notice it reads that the address is already in use. There could be a stale entry in the kernel's network statistics table, which is maintained in PROC or visible via PROC. Let's net that NTLP grep 3306. Now notice that it's bound to not only IP4, but IP6. So now it's available to anyone who has access to our Red Hat box. So however they're able to get to our Red Hat box through any internal subnet, including the local net, which is the local broadcast domain, so long as they can touch our 3306 and authenticate, let's say as root at any host, they'll be able to take advantage of the tunnel as long as the tunnel is up and running. Now you can set up tunnels in the background to ensure that they persist. In other words, forked tunnels if you so choose, or use SSL with the MySQL clients. So let's try this out. We've got this port up and running. Let's be sure that it still works for the local user. We'll use MySQL, prompt for password, with a host of, instead of even loopback, let's go with our routable address, which is what would be indicated by other connecting clients, so .111. So this will prompt and connect us as root momentarily. And we could even select a default database if we'd like, such as MySQL. This would use the MySQL database. And let's authenticate. Of course, the user has a weak password. Show tables. We're now within the context of MySQL. Show grants. We've connected as a user named root at any host. Show databases. And there are the various databases. We can use any of them and so on. Let's quit the connection. Now the next test is to see whether or not some other host on the wire is able to connect likewise. Now we've got another box on our network. In fact, we've got tons of boxes on our network, some of which we never ever connect to during our studies. Another one is our build box. This box functions as a repository for ISO images, source files, HTML, XML files that make up our products. So it allows us to build items. It's called Linux EBT Build 1. So let's SSH into it. Its IP is 75.101. And we'll accept the key since we have not connected to it. Authenticate, of course. Now we're on. This is Linux CBT Build 1, and it's running the latest, as of roughly spring 2010, Debian release. Cat ETC, tab out our release file, which is labeled Debian version 504. You name A shows the shell, so on and so forth. So let's switch MySQL from this box, and there it is. And if we tab out, MySQL, we see the different utilities included, and most of them are included with Red Hat and SUSE as well. We've used MySQL Show, as well as MySM, as well as MySQL Check. Let's see if MySM 
is available and it isn't my sm check not with the debian release but that's not an issue for us so to determine whether or not the port's available will mysql connect as a user, user and then prompt and the host's ip address is 75 111 the red hat hosts ip and this will prompt authenticate us moment momentarily and give us a session show grants we can navigate through the history if we'd like we're on the box and we're on from a remote box using the forwarded tunnel so that's the idea behind ssh gateway ports option is that it publishes the port that you forward to the user community that has access to your host so so long as they're able to touch your host they're able to take advantage of that forwarded port and the forwarded port of course is encrypted so mysql currently is connected to a port and the communications between the client and that port is not encrypted but from that port over to the target server is encrypted so right now what we've got is the following Linux CBT DB1 has a connection which is clear text to Linux CBT serve one however from Linux CBT serve one to the target system Linux CBT SUSE one the communications is entirely encrypted so there's only one portion of this tunnel that's not encrypted and that's from the build box and that's not DB1 but build one from the build box to the box that's sharing the forwarded port but otherwise locally if you connect to the SSH channel it's all encrypted from serve one to the target SUSE one it's entirely encrypted so that's one way if you have a MySQL server across the net to connect to it now let's just show you another way to do this will restrict MySQL because our MySQL instance is referenced primarily from the server so there's really no need to publish its port on a routable address so let's restrict MySQL to the loopback adapter which inherently makes it more secure since that means it will not be published on the wire on a public or a routable interface or a public interface so we'll need to modify etc my.conf this file of course contains a directive so update to bind to loopback adapter and then reinitiate the tunnel so 4b will be to reinitiate the tunnel based on this new loopback setting so let's go to the shell and see what's going on let's drop some of these sessions otherwise they're going to bomb We'll leave the SSH session open and test it after the fact. Let's kill this session as well. Control Shift W just to clean things up. And this is a session on SUSE 1. We'll clear it as well just to keep it clean. And here's the tunnel window. Let's clear it here. There's some command sequences that you can run, like dot pound mark or hash mark when the SSH tunnel is up and running. Now let's confirm that the tunnel isn't available by using a netstat NTLP grep 3306 and it's not running. So the new thing that we want to do is restrict the MySQL listener. We need to SU in on the host box and then modify the my.cnf. This file contains the port as well as the IP address that the server will listen to. Now this is the client area. This just basically this area governs any of the clients that follow the client block or read the client block. The server listens to or parses the MySQLD block. And if you man MySQLD, you'll see the options that allow you to force the server to listen to specific IP addresses as well as ports. It also allows you to skip networking. If you notice, let's scroll back up. That is an option that's commented, obviously, but this is a way to use Unix domain sockets entirely, which means 
you will only be able to access the MySQL server locally. But if you need TCP IP access, more accurately TCP access, then you'll need to configure the MySQL D block. The directive that's important to us is called bind. So let's let it look like the res and we want it to bind to the loopback adapter. We'll then restart the service using an etc init d. MySQL restart. This will restart the MySQL safe process which sends safe options to the MySQL D binary. And then let's netstat that again in TLP grep 3306. And now it's bound to the loopback adapter which means we definitely cannot get to the MySQL port using a routable IP. But we can with a tunnel. Now let's just ensure that what we're saying holds true by trying it. So from the Red Hat box, let's try to SSH in and route that port again. You'll see that it'll fail because the port is not available on 192.168.75.50. And we'll wait for this to authenticate. Reads bind address already in use, but we did see that before. So let's check whether or not it actually bound to the or bound, binded itself to the address. From the build one box, a simple telnet to the IP address on the Red Hat box 3306 will tell us whether or not it connects. And notice it immediately closes because it's really not available. So that means, and you can see the connection was refused. So it doesn't, it's not being forwarded. Let's drop the shell and update our command to show you how it needs to be changed. So now that the port is available on a different IP, we're going to take the command and alter it so that it fits our scenario. So to reinitiate the tunnel, we use the following. We simply change the IP address where the port is located from the routable address to the loopback address, and that's it. But the idea is that the command still preserves to the right the host's, the host's address that's used to connect to the loopback address because what this port forwarding command really says is bind locally 3306 the host port combination loopback colon 3306 and get there through 192.168.75.50 as opposed to let's say 111.30 or some other box so let's put this into action and test it from the various systems Control shift v that'll use PKI to connect. Whether or not it throws already bound is something we'll see momentarily, but that's besides the point. The point is whether or not the port's available. And already address is already in use, but let's see if the port's available from a different box. And notice it is available. So instead of kicking us off immediately, it comes back with gibberish, which is better than kicking us off. Band handshake, it kicked us off and the session's now encrypted. So that means we're now even more secure because the host server is no longer bound to one of its routable addresses, but we can still initiate MySQL connections because the SSH tunnel allows us to do so. So let's try this out. You'll see from the build one box, let's just check our password that we'll be able to connect. And it bombed because our password doesn't match the appropriate credential. Let's try that again. And we'll explain that momentarily. So show grants will explain it for us. So what's happening now is we're authenticating as a different user, albeit one with super user privileges, but we're authenticating as a user root at localhost as opposed to root at the FQDN or using percent the asterisk substitute variable. And that is because the connection is now based on localhost. We're connecting to the loopback adapter. So the server interprets the connection to be a loopback or local connection. So let's just note that, that when you use this configuration, your credential will change. So if that user has a different password, keep that in mind. So note, this secure forwarding mechanism to the loopback adapter will authenticate inbound requests as 
user at localhost. So bear that in mind. All of the connections will come in as whatever username supplied on the command line at localhost. Now you can of course override that by indicating your own user on the command line if you'd like. But the server interprets what it interprets. For example, let's quit this session. It interprets by default if you don't specify. Let's define a user root at linuxcbt build one dot linuxcbt dot internal as our full username. We'll then authenticate and we'll try to use the appropriate password and notice it broke up. Let's just check that again. We'll protect it all with single quotes because it's actually breaking it and not allowing us to authenticate. And we'll try to authenticate this time with the password for the wildcard user and now for the general user and notice it doesn't work. So when you supply something that doesn't match what you're coming from, it fails. The server performs its interpretation based on what's actually supplied, whether it's localhost or the FQDN or the short name of the host. So it's not so easy to trick the server or to spoof the wrong username. The server will still hold you to the connecting client information that's in the stream. So right now we've set up this tunnel. It's up and running. It's available so long as that pseudo terminal continues to run the port will be published and available to all users on the wire.